So I'm fortunate to have all four of the new OLED TVs in the house for this video. The LG C1 and G1 with the Sony A80J and A90J. I'm going to summarize each of the TVs and show you the footage that I have to differentiate the four panels. And then of course, help you decide which one of these great TVs would be right for you if the price is right. What's up, I'm B the Installer, and I've been buying and installing TVs for my clients for many years, and I'm pretty excited to talk about the very best OLED TVs and to find out which one is right for you. Before we get into it, please make sure to smash the like button as it really helps out the channel and only takes a hot second for you, even if you don't like the video. And if you're not subscribed, you should hit that subscribe button and set the notification bell to all so you're informed when I upload a new video. I'm also on Instagram, Twitter, and have a streaming channel called Pass the Remote where we talk live about TVs and other tech. So check all of that out in the description. And let me know in the comments which OLED do you have and why, or which will you recommend to your friends and family. I'm interested to know. With all that out of the way, let's start with some of the main points and differences between these four OLED TVs. And first we have the LG OLEDs, and both the LG C1 and G1 are very impressive TVs with very different designs. The LG C1 is the newest model in a long line of very similar looking panels. It's likely the most popular OLED because of its consistent quality and product features. I'm not sure that there's a better looking TV with the razor thin design, especially if it's on the very heavy and stable TV stand, which also has the added benefit of directing the sound out at the audience from the downward firing speakers. The LG G1 Gallery Series OLED was designed to be flat against the wall, and it does look really nice when properly installed. At less than an inch thick, with the TV mount that recesses into the back along with the cable management, there isn't a better looking TV for the wall, besides possibly the Samsung frame, which isn't as good of a TV as the LG G1. The speakers on the LG G1 are again on the bottom of the TV, and there's nothing to bounce that sound out of the audience when it's on the wall, but it still sounds quite good. And to be fair, the LG C1 mounted on the wall has the same issue and it doesn't look quite as cool. The LG C1 comes in the sizes ranging from 48 inch up to the massive 83 inch, with 55, 65, and 77 inch options in between, while the LG G1 only comes in the 55, 65, and 77 inch. The LG OLEDs have always been very solid on specs and features, and both the C1 and G1 offer four HDMI ports that are all 2.1 capable, meaning that you can game with 4K resolution at 120 frames per second. So no matter the type of console, PS5 or Xbox Series X, or even from your computer, you can get the top features in any and all HDMI ports. In addition to the gaming features, the operating system has been updated to have a more robust home screen. There are customizable areas that include shows and movies from the apps you use, as well as sports scores. I was pretty used to having the pop-up from the bottom when pressing the home button on the older LG TVs, so this new version of the OS is not quite as easy to move around quickly without exiting your current input or app, but the WebOS is still quite good and has a ton of useful apps and content. The new game bar on both LG OLEDs is definitely a cool feature. When in game mode, you can press the sprocket on the remote, which brings up the current FPS and what other gaming features are engaged. And if you need further corrections, you can quickly enter into the larger screen and adjust the white and black levels, or use presets that are made for certain types of games and even add a blue light filter to rest your eyes. There are two spec differences that I want to speak about with regards to the two LG OLEDs. The first is that the LG G1 Gallery Series has what's called the Evo panel, where it's a new panel and software to make the TV brighter and better. Now all four of these OLEDs technically do have a newer panel, but the LG C1 doesn't offer that software upgrade to utilize the Evo panel the way that the G1 does. The other spec difference is that the LG G1 also offers the ATSC 3.0 next gen tuner. So it can get all kinds of 4K broadcasts without additional hardware, which might be something that's useful in your area. The LG C1 does not come with that tuner. So overall, two great TVs with a lot of upside. One better for the stand in the LG C1, and the LG G1 made for wall mounting, hence the Gallery Series name. But to know if these OLEDs are best for you or for the money, you need to know the competition. And Sony has come ready with two OLED TVs of their own in the A80J and the A90J Master Series OLED. These two OLED TVs are a little closer in appearance for the average TV buyer, 
but there are some differences. The A80J is a more traditional looking Sony OLED that comes in 55, 65, and 77 inch. The more practically priced A80J has a couple of ways you can finagle the feet to set it up lower or higher if you need a soundbar. And on the flip side, the A90J Master Series OLED has a bit of a unique look with a super low profile stand setup a Bravia logo on its more premium backing and exposed glass edges on the 55 and 65 inch. The 83 inch differs a bit with metal edging around the glass panel and with an option for the feet to be placed more central to the TV. The Sony OLEDs have four HDMI ports as well, but only two of them are HDMI 2.1 and one of those is the eARC or Enhanced Audio Return Channel port where you'd wanna connect your soundbar or your audio system. And I'll get more into the gaming in a second, but with regards to that audio, you may actually not need a soundbar with these Sonys because both OLEDs use the acoustic surface audio technology to deliver immersed sound from the screen itself. So it doesn't matter if the TVs are wall mounted or on a stand, Either way, the sound is a massive improvement over your typical TV speakers. And both Sony OLEDs have the ATSC 3.0 tuner, so that's also a plus. Sony is using the new Google TV OS, which is similar to the Android OS of past, just with more sections, recommending content based on viewing habits and apps used. I was fine with the Android TV and I'm fine with Google TV. Both Sony OLEDs come with free rentals on the new Bravia Core app, which has a solid Sony movie collection. There are three differences besides the shape of these TVs, and the biggest is that the Sony A90J has a heat sink behind the OLED panel to disperse the energy created when heating up, so Sony can push this panel harder than the A80J. This results in a brighter panel, especially over long viewing times. The second difference is back to the audio quality. And while both of these Sony OLEDs have some of the best audio quality on a TV, the Sony A90J has two times the power in the speakers at 60 watts with two woofers, while the A80J only has 30 watts, including just one woofer. But again, I think both are very good if you don't have a separate soundbar or system. And the third difference is just the remote. The A90J has a really clean looking remote with a metal finish and backlit keys. And it's nice to have on a TV, especially OLED in a darker room, even though it does drain batteries really fast. The good news is that you can order one for your A80J if you so desire. Contrary to some of the comments about the function and availability, I've tested it for many days on the Sony A80J and it definitely works after going into the Bluetooth setup and adding a new remote. There are sites that sell this remote, but I'm not associated with them, so buy it where you can. And funny how the remote or speakers or even gaming features can be the difference maker when buying a TV. And maybe that should be the big takeaway. But I do want to show some of the differences that I've seen on these four TVs and finish with my recommendations. I want to start with some basic cable TV. Because though these OLEDs are extraordinary with 4K HDR and gaming, a majority of TV watchers are still piping in cable or sports or news to some degree. And when all four TVs are up and in optimal accurate modes for watching cable, I've noticed that the LG TVs are slightly brighter in this SDR or standard dynamic range. But the Sony TVs are sharper and upscale with a cleaner image. So can you tell which is which? Back to the Future really makes it easy to see some of this stuff. First, the white lab coat on Doc Brown is clearly brighter on the LGs to the right. And the LG C1 on the bottom right seems to be the brightest to me in much of the SDR content. Though at times the G1 above it looks similarly bright. But if you look closely, you can see both the LGs on the right to have more digital noise. And the Sony A90J on the top left and the A80J on the bottom left seem to do better with the grainy film. The same sort of processing differences are noticeable when viewing sports. With basketball on, again, the courts on the LGs look brighter, which always catches your eye and is a positive, but again, the Sonys on the left have less glitching or artifacts when the players are moving around fast. When I made a video comparing the A90J to the C1 and I had the LG C10 of 2020 with it, I could see that the LG C1 has made huge gains in this department with the new A9 Gen 4 processor over the LG C10 of 2020. So again, I'm quite happy with the LG OLEDs in the processing this year, but the XR processor of the Sony OLEDs is just slightly better yet. And when all four OLEDs were connected to this Netflix movie, you can see some of the differences in brightness and detail again. 
this time in similar Dolby Vision modes, and the camera exposed to the overall scene, the Sonys on the left are definitely brighter, to the point that in some scenes they look blown out on the Sonys on the left, and or the LGs look a bit dim without detail. But in scene to scene in Dolby Vision HDR, the two Sonys look to have a bit more life to the picture. This scene specifically is a good example of how some say OLED TVs can look too dim. I see the faces on the LG TVs on the right to lack a bit of brightness and color, while the Sonys on the left look much more realistic. With each TV in game mode, I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about the differences of the gaming features. I've shown this footage before and stated that I prefer the richness and detail on the LGs on the right, but some have commented that the Sony brightness and detail was better. But really it may come down to the gaming features on the specific TVs. Has anyone noticed that in all of these clips, the LGs change to the next scene first? The signal from the PS5 gets to the LGs and makes the change faster than the Sony OLEDs. That low input lag on the LGs, along with the top gaming features and new game bar, and just great connectivity in general, make it easy for me to recommend LG for gaming. But Sony isn't a bad TV for gaming. Both of the Sony OLEDs have HDMI 2.1 for gaming at 4K at 120 frames per second, and they work just fine with the PS5. But for the most of the last two years, the VRR or variable refresh rate for gaming was MIA, and that's missing in action. So if you're playing a fast paced game on an Xbox Series X or on a PC, it could cause some tearing of the screen. LG OLEDs have had VRR for the last two years and even G-Sync and FreeSync for computer gaming. So I guess one of the first ways that we can differentiate which TV might be for you is to know how often you may use the Xbox Series X or computer for gaming. If that's your primary use for the TV, then I do think it's fair to recommend the LG OLEDs. And it's not about Sony not having working VRR or that now that they have it, it's not great. It's not even an issue for me. I don't really care about that, but just in general, the picture quality of the TVs are just not significant enough for me to recommend a Sony over an LG for gaming when LG gaming and overall connectivity is so good. And if we're just talking about gaming features, then you have two great LG OLEDs to consider, one best on the wall and one best on the stand. I think they're both amazing, and so then I turn to the rest of the pros and cons. As I stated before, the LG C1 just looks good. Not quite as good on the wall. The LG G1 on the other hand is made for the wall and looks really clean when installed on the LG mount. But that mount is very limited and it doesn't really extend much at all. And when it's pulled away from the wall, it just swings around. But I have seen in the comments that many of those who buy the LG G1 just leave it flat on the wall. So my first conclusion and recommendation is for anyone whom gaming features are needed or preferred and who want that very cleanest flat look against the wall, the LG G1 is really the best option. I mean, it is an OLED that has a three quarter inch clean uniform profile with a mount that sits inside the frame and has every gaming feature as well as much improved processing over its predecessor, the G10. And if all else fails, it still has a Visa mount holes to put on any sort of TV brackets or you can buy feet and stand it up. So maybe it's a bit more versatile than I initially gave it credit for. But for me personally, who installs TVs and always recommends TVs based on real world uses, I just feel more comfortable with the LG C1. First of all, it's significantly less expensive. But on top of that, if I'm going to mount a TV, I prefer to have the ability to turn the TV left and right if needed. And if it's less expensive and I'm turning it, then the G1 is really not as helpful. In addition, when the C1 is on the stand, it looks even better. And the sound quality seems to be better with the deflector plate that sends the sound out at the audience. So the same great features, great processing, all the gaming specs in the world, and it's the least expensive OLED on the list. So it's easy to recommend the LG C1 as the best gaming TV for most people and an overall great option because the price is so low. Now on the other side, there are some advantages to Sony, including the XR processor, even if the LG's A9 processor has narrowed the gap. It's noticeable when upscaling lower res video as well as with motion and sharpness on most content. So if you're not a hardcore gamer where LG has an advantage, then the Sony's with that XR processor, HDMI 2.1, the next gen tuner, and the acoustic surface speakers are just better for movie watching. And as of now, Sony has also been quite aggressive with the pricing on the Sony A80J. So it's about as good a deal as you can get for a Sony OLED TV. And the A80J is probably my best buy on any level because of how good the speakers sound while the TV looks superb and has nearly every benefit that the Sony A90J Master Series OLED has. And I can 
can tell people are giving both the Sony A80J as well as the LG C1 a solid look because that's my most popular video comparison. So if you need more info on that matchup, check that video out. And lastly, we have the Sony A90J. And as I just said, the Sony A80J comes really close to the quality of the A90J, but having that heat sink to push the OLED a little harder really helps you enjoy the exceptional detail and specular highlights of the Sony A90J. I mean, it is the TV of the year. And maybe I'm being a bit redundant, but the speakers on the A90J are incredible for a TV. And the ability to use the TV as a center channel with an AVR or with the new Sony HDA9 is amazing. I think both Sony TVs look great on the wall or stands, but the super low profile look of the A90J is killer. But you know what else is killer? Paying $8,000 for an OLED. So I'd have a hard time recommending the A90J in a certain size when you can get another larger OLED for less. So keep that in mind, that size and use case does outweigh my specific preferences on these TVs. But if I was forced to choose, I did summarize these in reverse order of which I would buy them. The A90J, then the A80J, followed very closely by the LG C1, and then the G1 if you prefer that flush look. It's how I would buy these based on my family primarily watching TV and movies and playing the occasional game. But all four of these TVs would be recommended before any other LCD-based TVs or mini LEDs or even 8K. In my opinion, these are the best four TVs on the market. So I hope this video has helped. Let me know which TV you'd buy or recommend to your friends or family. Make sure to smash the like button on the way out, subscribe, and set the notification bell to all so you get my next upload. And just like that, you can be the installer. Thank you.